this video, we will explore the setup of the TriCaster hardware, including all external audio video inputs and outputs. Let's start by examining what comes in the box. You get the TriCaster itself, a USB keyboard, a box of accessories, and a quick start guide. In the accessory box, you will find a USB mouse, a BNC ratcheting tool, a set of rubber feet that can be used on the bottom of the system if you want to use it as a desktop unit, and two power cords. Now, if you want to mount the TriCaster 8000 in a rack, be sure to use the optional rack mount rails as trying to secure the unit using only the ears on the front panel with screws can damage the unit. Now, you'll find the serial number here. Write it down as you'll need this later for registration. Make sure you have room for the control surface, keyboard, and the mouse in your production area. Before powering up the system, you can install the drives. This TriCaster comes with four hard drives to populate the removable hard drive bays in the system. To access the drive bays, pull down on the front door. It's held in place with a strong magnet. On the front of the machine, you will see the main power switch, some USB ports, and the four drive bays. Open the drive bays by pulling on the door here and insert the drives. They're labeled D, E, F, and G, and they go in that order from top to bottom. The four hard drives ship in their own packaging. This is because the unit must not be shipped with the drives installed as this may damage the TriCaster. Always remove the four hard drives and ship them and the system in their original packaging. Also included with the system is the control surface. Remove this from its box and place it in the production area. In the control surface box, you will find its power cord. Plug it into the control surface here and then attach the USB cable here on the control surface and then to the TriCaster using one of the available USB ports on the back of the system. Now, let's look at the back panel. Plug the power cables into the TriCaster here and here, and then into power outlets. Make sure the power supplies are turned on with this switch on each supply. If you try to turn on the TriCaster and get no response from the power button on the front of the machine, Always remember to check and make sure that the power supplies are turned on. Now, if you hear a beeping when the system starts up, this means one of the two supplies is not functioning, is not on, or is not getting power. The system can run on one supply, but it is best to always use both. If you need to operate with one power supply, you can silence the alarm by hitting this button. If you are going to use an uninterrupted power supply or power conditioner, make sure it is a true sine wave power supply. This will be indicated on the box of the power supply in its specifications. The TriCaster requires at least one monitor to use as the main user interface. This monitor is attached here using the DVI connector labeled interface. The monitor you use must be able to display 1600 by 1050 or better. Setting the main interface resolution to 1920 by 1080 allows for more screen area to accommodate the system controls. There's also a second DVI output labeled MultiView. Here, you attach a second monitor to be used as a multi-viewer. This is recommended but not necessary for running the TriCaster. The second monitor is a multi-viewer which can be configured for many types of display outputs from within the system interface. This can be very useful during a live production and you should take advantage of it. Next, let's attach the keyboard using one of the USB connections on the machine. The mouse is also attached using a USB port. The included control surface is also attached via a USB port, but has its own power cord and needs to be plugged into AC power. You can also attach your TriCaster to a computer network. There is a gigabit Ethernet port on the back, so plug in your network cable here. 
The Ethernet port is how you attach the TriCaster to a network, bring in external sources such as other TriCaster or three-play systems, IVGA display of external computers, or Apple AirPlay devices. It's also how you gain internet access for streaming and social media uploading. There is an optional audio control surface available called the Avid Artist Mix. This is also connected to the TriCaster via the network using the same port. An internet connection will be handy if you want to register your TriCaster online. It can be useful to have the TriCaster attached to a wireless network for bringing in IVGA and Apple AirPlay sources wirelessly. Simply connect the TriCaster with a wire to a wireless hub or to a network that has internet activity. Now you can log your wireless devices onto the wireless network attached to that same network and they can see the TriCaster. Some connectors have locking screws and some don't. USB and HDMI connectors can easily be pulled out with a slight tug. Remember to manage your cables during the production to make sure that they are out of the way and not run across areas where people could walk and trip on them. Not only is this dangerous as a tripping hazard, but it could also pull the cables out of the TriCaster during a live production. Video comes in many formats and resolutions, and the TriCaster works with most of them right out of the box. Whether you have old standard definition gear or brand new high definition equipment, it will connect to the TriCaster quickly and easily, and you can even mix and match formats and resolutions on the way in and out during the same production. You can connect SDI or composite video using a single cable, YC video using two cables, and component video using three cables. Now, if using standard definition equipment, you can use any of these formats, but high definition video will only come in through component and SDI. The TriCaster features locking BNC connectors for video inputs and outputs, and these are an industry standard. But often, Cameras will have RCA style connectors on the cables that come with the camera. Online, at your local electronics retailer or from your reseller, you'll be able to get RCA to BNC adapters. These will convert the RCA cables to BNC for connection to the TriCaster. There is also an eSATA port on the back allowing you to connect external eSATA drives for expanded storage. The TriCaster 8000 features eight video inputs, and each can be different. To connect SDSDI or HDSDI to the system, use this connector for the desired input. To connect composite video, attach the cable to this connector for the desired input. To attach YC video, use these two connectors, this one for Y and this one for C for the desired input. To attach component video, Use these three connectors, attaching the red cable here, the green cable here, and the blue cable here for the desired input. Always remember that these connectors have minus R and minus B. That's going to be your red and your blue. The only other connector is the Y connector, and that's going to be green. Remember, High definition video can only be brought in through a component or an SDI connection on this TriCaster. If you are using sync or a GenLock signal, that can be attached to the TriCaster here. The TriCaster works with both bi-level and tri-level GenLock signals. GenLocking is not required to use the TriCaster, but NewTek recommends you use it. Failure to GenLock TriCaster input sources can cause latency to drift. There are three video output rows on this TriCaster, and each output row consists of an SDI output and a set of analog video outputs. Both digital and analog outputs are active at the same time, meaning this is six video outputs, three SDI, and three analog, arranged into three rows of outputs. Now, when you begin a production or a session in the TriCaster, one of the first things you do is choose a resolution, say 1080i. The output row number one is going to match the resolution you set up for the session. What is being output is configurable and the TriCaster can send many of its inputs and outputs directly to this output row, 
but the resolution will match the session. Like output row number one, output row number two is also configurable as to what can be sent out, but you can also adjust the resolution on this output row. So, output row number one is following the session at 1080i. This output row can be set to an alternative resolution, such as 720 or even standard definition in 4x3 or 16x9 aspect ratios. The third output row can be set up to follow the configuration of output one or two duplicating either of those output rows. Output number four is this HDMI connector, allowing you to output audio and video across a single cable. This output is also configurable to follow the setup for output rows one or two duplicating them in HDMI format. Output number five is an HDMI display only output. This is designed to drive a projector or an external display. Now this output can only send video. It can be configured to follow outputs one or two or set up to display network inputs, media players, or frame buffers, making it perfect for second screen content like computer presentations or support videos. Output number six is a VGA output, which is also designed to drive projectors or displays. It is also configurable, and it is also video only. Now, even though they are not numbered on the back plate, outputs number seven and eight are the network and stream outputs, which are both sent out over the ethernet cable. There are eight analog audio inputs along the top of the back plate. Each is a pair of inputs that can be used with each video input, but they can also be used as independent stereo inputs themselves. There are also AES-EBU connectors allowing four channels of digital audio per connector. These connectors are found here. You can also bring audio in via the SDI video signal, and the TriCaster will bring in the first four channels of audio on that SDI signal. The main audio output of the TriCaster can be sent out many ways. The first is the analog program audio out, and it is these four channels. This can also be sent digitally via AES-EBU connectors or as part of an SDI video output. There's also an auxiliary audio output that is configurable from the internal audio mixer. This can be sent out the aux audio outputs here as four channels, or it can be assigned to other outputs. For instance, the aux audio output could be assigned to the HDMI output. This allows for two separate audio mixes from one TriCaster. There's also a headphones output with its own volume control, and you can solo inputs or groups of inputs to the headphones before sending it out live. There is a 15-pin connector for tally light support, the TriCaster does not come with a tally system, but it does support one. There are a few third-party options available, and the pinouts for this connector are laid out in the manual, allowing you to build your own. This tally system supports three colors.